Welcome to the Electricity for HVAC Simulator. This is a series of interactive electrical wiring diagrams that allows the user to master their basic as well as some advanced electrical skills on various HVAC systems. This particular diagram is of a two-stage heating cooling system, uh, typically not used on residential applications, more so on commercial. And this is one of the more complex diagrams within the wiring diagram module. Now, I just want to briefly go over some of the components and this basic sequence of operations. Again, you can always click on this tab right here at the top left, and this will provide us with a detailed sequence of operations on the unit. But for the time being, I'm going to store that away. And we're going to take a look at this. Now, again, you can zoom in if you need to, um, to clearly identify components and labelings. Um, if we start at the low voltage section here, we have 24 volts from this transformer down here, which is applied to the R terminal of the thermostat. Um, we have two heating thermostats between R and W1 is our first stage, R and W2 is our second stage. Um, these allow individual heating stages to run based on heat loss from the space. In other words, it matches the load of the unit, or I should say, it matches the capacity of the unit to the load at that current time. So as it gets colder out, we could turn on our second stage. Uh, this leads to uh, a great increase in energy efficiency with these type of units. We also have two stages of cooling here. Uh, we have Y1 and Y2. Um, which also can operate individually two different compressors and condenser fans. So again, we can load match. So on a, on a fairly mild day, we may only be running one compressor. Um, as the temperature or, and or relative humidity increases outside or the heat gain increases, we can turn on the second stage automatically. Now, just a little note about two-stage thermostats. Typically, there is a two-degree fixed differential between the first and second stages of a heating and cooling thermostat that has this two-stage function. Meaning that if the temperature uh, was set for 68 degrees in heating mode, if in fact the internal temperature of the space fell two degrees below that point to 66, that would energize our second stage, indicating that there's an increase in heat loss due to the outdoor temperature getting colder. The same thing goes for cooling. First stage can operate independently when the temperature outside is fairly mild. Um, if we had it set for 75 degrees and one stage was operating, if the temperature in the space had risen to 77 degrees, again about two degrees above this point, the second stage cooling thermostat, which is here at Y2 would close and turn on the second compressor. So let's take a look at some of the components. We have a series of relays down here at the bottom. Um, each relay operates a load in the line voltage section. So to start with, we're going to look at stage one thermostat, which when closed will energize the heating contactor one relay coil. This would close these contacts right here that are in series to the first stage electric heater, and it would turn the heater on. Uh, this would also uh, energize the indoor fan relay and turn the indoor fan on as well so that we're delivering heat to the home. So let's take a look at this really quick. I'm going to turn the system selector switch to heat and we can see that closes the selector switch within the thermostat. I'm going to turn the thermostat set point up above my space temperature which is currently 69 degrees. So let's turn it up to 70 degrees and we can see that the contacts in this first stage thermostat close which provides 24 volts to the heating contactor and the indoor fan relay coil which by energizing will close their associated contacts and we can see that the heating contactor contacts have closed and the first stage electric heaters on uh, we can also see that these contacts here have closed and it's turning on the indoor fan motor so this is first stage heat completely with second stage heat if the space temperature falls two degrees below that set point and I'm going to turn this down we can see that the second stage closes once we reach that two degree differential this energizes heating contactor relay coil 2 which will close its contacts and turn on the second stage electric heater next we're going to look at cooling so I'm going to hit the selector switch to cool here and that moves the position in the selector switch within the thermostat to the cooling thermostats which are designated as Y1 and Y2 and just there, just to review there are some standard color codes that you should be aware of with heating cooling thermostats um, 
R or red is typically your power in from the transformer, W is your heating function, Y is your cooling function, and G or green would be your fan or indoor fan relay function. Okay, So let's take a look. I've moved it to the cooling position and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, turn the space temperature up above the set point. Now you can also, if the space temperature let's say is at a uh, 75 or 78 degrees we can um, you know we can turn the thermostat down below that set point as well either way uh, we want to get those thermostats closed so I'm just going to turn it back just a little bit and I'm going to set the system thermostat down below the space temperature once we do this we can see that the contacts in the cooling thermostat close between R and Y1 this allows power to the contactor coil one through the high pressure switch and the compressor internal thermostat which are safety switches here that are protecting the compressor against excessive pressures as well as excessive internal temperatures possibly due to a leak or something of that sort so as we can see contactor coil one energizes we also energize the indoor fan relay down through this red wire and across the fan switch which is in the auto position so if we look up top now we can see that the contactor contacts have closed to contactor one energizing compressor one and condenser fan one and we can also see that the indoor fan relay is on uh, through its norm its normally open contacts which have now closed due to the coil being energized now you also have the option here to run this in ventilation mode which would mean you can just select the fan switch to the on position which will only energize the indoor fan motor this is used for indoor air quality uh, primarily filtration uh, uh, dehumidification and things like that next I'm going to look at second stage cooling as the temperature rises outside the heat gain to the space is going to increase and the first stage BTU value will not be enough to keep up with this gain. In other words, we can't remove enough heat and the temperature in the space will begin to rise. When this space temperature rises two degrees above the set point, the second stage thermostat between R and Y2 closes, as we can see here, and energizes compressor contactor 2 or the coil in the contactor. This closes these contacts up here which allows the second compressor and second condenser fan motor to run. Now again this is a fairly complex unit but if you have a good understanding of relays and how they work it shouldn't be too difficult. I would suggest starting with some of the more um, uh, basic diagrams within the module. Now our next step here is to use this diagram in challenge mode which allows us to input faults into the system and actually use a voltmeter to check those faults so let me just show you here quickly now to select challenge mode simply click on this tab up here at the top left just below the home icon and click on challenge mode once at the challenge mode screen we can select from a series of faults as well as take a quiz to test your mastery of the diagram and this type of HVAC system. To use the fault inputs click on this little X here within the circle which is the third button down and we can select from a whole series of faults here and I'm gonna uh, I'm actually gonna select uh, a faulty compressor number one and as we do that we can now click on the meter icon here at the bottom right of the page turn the selector dial to AC volts and we need to put the system in first stage cooling to see what's going on here so we're gonna click the cooling we're gonna set the system thermostat setting below the space temperature and as we can see the contacts to Y1 closed the compressor contactor one is energized and our contacts are closed and our condenser fan motor is running but we have no compressor operation now this means that obviously we have everything is fine up through the contactor contacts and this only leads us to the compressor now of course the compressor is going to possibly have a starting relay or uh, potentially uh, capacitors that may be faulty also or an internal overload protector but in this case here we're just looking at the compressor not operating we want to make sure we've got good connections to it so what I'm going to do I'm going to place the meter leads uh, across the compressor and just drop them on the red glowing hot spots again if you need to zoom in to help uh, low key, uh, drop the meter leads uh, you may want to do that so as I drop those at the compressor we can see that we have 
240 volts to the compressor and it's not operating. So this, this tends to lead, uh, lead us to that it's a faulty compressor. Again, you're going to need to use an ohm meter or possibly a microfarad tester to weed out any possi possible malfunctions with the capacitor, starting relays, or internal overload protection and things like that. So I would suggest trying each of the faults. Um, it will really help you master these skills. For now, I'm going to store the meter. And our last step uh, that we're going to do here is just look at the quizzes. I'm going to just turn the meter off and store that back in its toolbox. By clicking on the star tab here at the top left, we can launch a quiz. Uh, it's a series of questions that, again, they're just going to test uh, how well you did on this and how well you understand this particular diagram. Um, once you've completed the quiz, uh, a score of 90% or better is going to earn you a badge. Uh, good luck. Hey, it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.